Good day, Grade Twelves. Welcome to this next lesson on physical science, brought to you by Two and Able. In this lesson, we're going to carry on working on work energy and power. Um, we finished off this last lesson looking at this question, and we didn't finish it. And I decided that instead of trying to get hog, start the question halfway through again, that I would just start off by going through this question again because this question is quite a tricky question, and on top of it. Um, it is a typical exam question. So I think let's go through it from the beginning. It says a 60 kilogram skier, so the kilogram, 60 kilogram skier, with initial speed, initial speed of 12 meters per second, coasts up a 2.5 meter high rise. So he coasts up, which means he's not using any other energy. He's using his initial velocity, his kinetic energy, to coast up the 2.5 meter high rise. Find her final speed. They want VF, okay? Given that there's a coefficient of friction between her skis and the snow is 0,08. And they say, hint, find the distance traveled up the incline. So they want the distance traveled by the incline. Now remember we were doing conservation of mechanical energy when we did this. So we know normally that you've got, if there was no energy lost due to friction or transferred out of the system due to friction, we would have that EP plus EK at the bottom of the hill would equal EP plus EK at the top of the hill. Okay, right. But now, unfortunately, there is energy that is transferred out of the system. So what we have to do is we have to include the work done against friction. Okay, we have to include the work done against friction because now what we're saying is that this total amount of energy here is converted to the energy we have over here, but we've also used up some of that energy overcoming the force of friction. So the total at the bottom has to equal the total at the top plus the energy that we've used getting up the hill. Okay, so let's just look at the bottom. Do you agree there's no potential energy because of the fact that we're at zero ground? That is zero. We've got the kinetic energy. It's a half times the mass of the, well, let's just write these down, plus the initial velocity squared. The potential energy is going to be mgh plus a half mvf squared plus the wf. Okay. But we know that work done against the force of work done is equal to F delta X cos theta. But remember that this angle is the angle angle to the surface, to the surface. Okay, it's the angle to the surface. Okay, right. So now, if we think about this, the cos theta, the force of friction, if we had to draw a free body diagram, wait, let me just draw a free body diagram, it might help you. Okay, da, 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 da. okay, there's the force of gravity, as we're going up the slope, there's the force of gravity down, and there's the normal force here. And do you agree, since there is no, it's not, he's, the ski is not pushing herself up or anything, the only forces acting on her are the force of friction coming down, and the force of gravity that's pulling her down to slow her down, okay? So we have the force of friction that is parallel but in the opposite direction to motion. So therefore we can say that this is going to be a half times the mass of the skier, which is 60, times the initial velocity, which is 12 squared, equals the mass of the skier, which is 60, times 9,8 times the height that they gained, which is 2,5. Then they've also gained kinetic energy, which is why we're trying to work that out. So it's plus a half times by 60 times a VF squared plus this work done against friction. And unfortunately, I've run out of space here, so I'm going to write it underneath. It's going to be the force of the friction, which is going to be mu kfn, okay? times by the displacement, times by cos of minus, of, sorry, cos of 180 degrees. Cos of 180 degrees, okay? Why? Because it's in the opposite direction to which she's moving, but it's parallel to the surface. So cos of 180 degrees, if you draw a cos graph, does this, 
and that equals minus one. So you're basically saying that this is in the opposite direction. Okay, so therefore we got 30 times by 144 is equal to 60 times by 9,8 times by 2,5 plus a half times by 60, which is 30 VF squared plus the kinetic the mu k, which is the coefficient of the friction, is 0, 0, 8. The normal force, now remember that the normal force, okay, is this line here, is equal to the, the perpendicular component of the force of gravity, right? So if this angle here is 35 degrees, that angle there has to be 35 degrees as well, okay? So therefore, we've got that this is, what is that? That is going to be, we need Sokotoa. Sokotoa. We've got the adjacent side and we've got the hypotenuse. So we're going to go cos. So it is going to be cos of 35 degrees is equal to the adjacent, which is F normal because it's that what we're working for, over the force of gravity. So therefore, F normal is going to be Fg cos 35 degrees. So therefore, this Fn becomes Fg, which is the mass of the object, which is 60, times 9, comma 8, cos 35. And then we've got to do delta x, which we still haven't worked out yet. We're going to do that now, delta x. And then we've got this going back to this cos of 180, which is minus 1. Okay. So now we can put some of these numbers into our calculator. So let's do that and get it rid of some of these things. So let's switch it on. Okay. So we've got 30 times 144, which is 4,320. That's 4,320 is equal to, let's put this in number, into the calculator, we've got 60 times 9.8 times 2, sorry, delete, 2.5 equals 1,470, that's 1,470, plus 30 VF squared is equal to, and let's put these into our calculator and then we'll work out what delta x is in a minute. So we've got... 0 0.08, hmm. 0 0.8, multiplied with 60, multiplied with 9.8, multiplied with cos of 35, cos of 35. And again, I'm going to stress with you guys that you need to make sure that this doesn't say an R for radians. You need to make sure your calculator is set for degrees. And that equals 38,53. And remember, we're timesing by minus one. So it becomes, sorry, plus 38.53, 38,53. And then we've got that delta x that we have to work out, the delta x. So delta x is this distance here. But do you agree that this is actually a right angle triangle? where this angle here is 35 degrees, this here is 2,5, so we can use Sokoto to find the hypotenuse H. So this is the opposite side to the angle, this is the hypotenuse, so we can use sine. So I can say sine of 35 degrees is equal to 2,5 over the hypotenuse, which is in this case is delta X. So H is gonna be 2,5 over sine 35. So let's put that in our calculators. So we got 2.5, hmm, 0.5 divided by sine of 35, close brackets equals, and that becomes 4.36. So therefore, instead of this, we go 4,36. Right, so now all we have to do is pop these numbers into our calculator and solve for VF. So let's do that. So we've got 4320. 432, let's just move this calculator up, shall we? 2 minus 
1470, 1470, minus these two multiply together, bracket, that becomes 38, sorry, minus bracket, 38.53, multiplied by 4.36, Close brackets equals 2682. Now we need to divide by the 30 because that's just sorted out this number and this number and these two. So now what we need to do is divide that by 30. So it's that we're going to divide by 30. And this becomes this ridiculous thing there, 89.4. And then we need to square root the answer and we get 9.46. So VF is equal to 9.46 meters per second. And now grade 12, you always need to look and see if that answer makes sense. Is the final velocity less than the initial velocity? The initial velocity was 12 and the final velocity is 9.46. So yes, it is less, which is what we expect because not only has this person gained potential energy, so some of that energy is converted into potential energy, but she's actually done some work against the force of friction. So some of that energy will be converted into heat energy, which is usually what your force of friction produces. Okay, that was a very nice question. I like that a lot. If you struggle with that, please, Great Tolls, I'm going to stress it again, go back to the beginning of this recording and then either watch again or better still, pause the video at the beginning of the question and then try the question for yourself because watching the video alone is not actually going to help you. You need to actually do these questions by yourself and see if you can work them out. Right, so now let's talk about power. So power is actually very important. It's defined as a rate at which work is done or the rate at which energy is transferred to or from the system. So power is a rate, which means we divide it by time. Now remember that work can be given as F delta X cos theta. So power can be written as F delta X cos theta over T. But if delta X and F are in the same direction, then cos theta just becomes one. So you get F delta X over T, but delta X over T is velocity. So therefore, we can say that the another equation for power is for sums velocity. So power is defined as work divided by change in time, okay, or the rate at which work is done, or energy over the rate at which work, rate at which energy is dissipated, or it is force times velocity, and it's measured in watts. Okay, so let's look at a basic example. We've got calculate the power required for a force of 15 newtons be applied to move a 10 kilogram box at a speed of three meters per second over a frictionless surface. Okay, so we know that power is force times velocity. The force is 15 times the velocity of three. So that just becomes 45 watts. That's ridiculously easy. You're never gonna get anything that easy in the exams. Okay. Let's do something else. Here we go. A forklift. Okay, they want power when work is done against gravity. Okay. A forklift lifts a crate of mass 80 kgs at a constant velocity to a height of 12 meters over a time of six seconds. The forklift then holds the crate in place for 15 seconds. It says calculate how much power the forklift exerts in lifting the crate. Okay, so here is our crate and there is our forklift. Okay, don't worry about the fact that the forklift now looks like a crane. Okay, so there it is. And it's lifting up this crate which has a massive 80 kgs. It is lifting it up 12 meters in a time of six seconds. Okay, and then it holds the crate in place for 15 seconds. Okay, now it says calculate how much power the forklift exerts in lifting the crate. So it's quite interesting because power is equal to force times velocity, okay? But it's also to, to equal to work over time, changing work over time, which is also equal to changing energy over time. 
And do you agree that this, although it's traveling at a constant velocity, it doesn't have a net force, it's still gaining energy, it's getting potential energy. So we could say it's equal to hamga her. Sorry, I tend to write hamga her. And then my students remember it and I say to them, please don't tell anybody else that you're saying hamga her because they'll or say it out loud because you will sound like an idiot and I will sound like an idiot for teaching it to you. But really, energy is equal to MDH, okay, your potential energy. The mass of the object is 80. The acceleration against gravity is 9,8. It was lifted a displacement of 12 meters, all in a time of 6 seconds. So we can work that out using our calculator. We can say, okay, fine. We've got 9.8, doesn't matter, times 80 times 2 is equal to 1,568 joules. 1,568 watts, my apologies, watts. Okay, so the power that was used by the forklift to lift this crate is 1,568 watts. Now it says how much power does the forklift exert in holding the crate in place? Okay, so we know the power is delta W over delta T, which is delta E over delta T, which equals force times velocity. So all of these equations, if we think about them, are going to give us exactly the same answer, which is zero. Let's think about it. If we look at this one here, okay, do you agree that change in work is given to F delta X cos theta? But there is no delta x because it is remaining in place. So therefore, we've got a zero divided by change in time, which is just zero. So that gives me an answer of zero. This here gives me either there's a kinetic energy, changing kinetic energy, half mv squared. But since there's no velocity, it's zero divided by t. Or you can get mgh, but again, there's no gaining height. So therefore, it's zero. And this one here, there is no velocity. The velocity equals zero. So therefore, the whole of this is zero. So the correct answer for how much power does the forklift exert and hold the crate in place is a big fat zero. Right. You can think of it another way, which is very easy. We know that power is work over time, and we know that work is only exerted if there's a force, if there is movement, and if the movement is in the direction of the force. And in this case, it's being held stationary, so there's no movement. Right, now we get onto a nice question. It says a motor pulls a crate of 300 kgs with a constant force by means of a light inextensible rope running over a light frictionless pulley. What does that mean? It means it doesn't make any difference to our What's going on in that question? Okay, the coefficient of kinetic friction between the crate and the surface is 0,19. So they're telling us there's a force of friction here. By telling us that there's a coefficient of friction, they're telling us that there's a force of friction. It says calculate the magnitude of the frictional force acting between the crate and the surface. So if you weren't sure, now you are. We are working out the frictional force. So the first thing I'm gonna do is draw a free body diagram. So do you agree we've got the rope pulling it up? I'm going to call this T. We've got the force of friction this way, force of friction. We've got the normal force, which is over here, and we've got the force of gravity this way. And I know they haven't asked me for this. This is just really to help me. And we want the force of friction. But we know that the force of friction is equal to mu k f n. So we need to work out Fn, which is again why we draw our little diagram. Because why? Because we need to get that component there, because these two are equal, okay? So we need that blue component. Okay, so in order to get that blue component, we know that this angle here is 25 degrees, because it's the angle of the slope, right? We know that this here is force times gravity, and this is the adjacent side. So again, we're going to look at Sakatoa. And the reason we're doing this is because we want the normal force. And remember, the normal force is equal 
but in opposite direction to the perpendicular component of the force of gravity, right? So this is the perpendicular component, so we want this, okay? In order to get that, we've got the force of gravity, it's, it's going to be mass of 300 times by 9.8. But we want this component, and we've got the angle, the angle is 25 degrees, so we can use socket toe, we can say cos of 25 degrees, is equal to the adjacent, which is your F normal, it's the equivalent of the F normal in the opposite direction, over the hypotenuse, which is going to be FG, okay? So therefore, do you agree we can write that this is 0.19 times by FG cos of 25 degrees, okay? Which is 0.19 times by the mass of 300, times by 9,8, times by cos of 25 degrees. So we're going to put that all into our calculator. Okay, so we go clear it. We 0.19 times by 300, times by 9,8, times by cos of 25 degrees, close bracket, equals, and that becomes 506,26. It's 506,26 newtons. Okay, so now we know there's a force of friction of 506, 506, oh, it's horrible writing, 506,26 newtons. Okay, now it says the crate moves up with a constant speed of 0,5. So there's a constant velocity of 0,5 meters per second, okay? It says calculate the average power delivered by the motor while pulling the crate up the incline. So it wants the average power delivered by the crate while pulling the crate up the incline by the motor. Okay, so we know that there is no F net. Okay, do you agree? Because it's going at a constant velocity. So we know that F net equals zero. Okay, let me tell you what my thought process are. My thought process are P is equal to FV. They're telling us the V. Okay, so we need to get the F. And remember that this is the force of the motor, the force of the motor, which is the force that's in this rope here, right? So we know, therefore, the net force is zero because it's going at a constant velocity, which means there's no acceleration. That means the sum of all the forces has to equal zero. So in other words, that is equal to the force, the tension in the rope, plus the force of friction, plus the force of gravity parallel. Okay, think about it. Let's just go back to, um, I'm going to get raise quickly this drawing. And let's just talk about the free body diagram again, because you guys really need to understand this. Okay. We have a crate. And we have a dotted line, right? We've got the F normal. Okay, F normal. Right, now, we've got the tension in the rope, T, which is making it go uphill. Yeah, is the force of friction. But there's also the force of gravity, which is pulling it down. The force of gravity is doing two things. It is pulling it into the uh, surface of the Earth, which means that this is going to equal the normal force. But it's also pulling it down the surface. So therefore, your tension plus your force of friction plus the FG parallel has to equal zero if there is just a constant velocity. Okay, so zero is equal to tension plus the force of friction plus FG parallel. And this is the dude we're trying to work out because that, that is caused by the motor. So if we work out what T is and then we multiply it by the velocity, we'll have the average power. So that's what we want. So we've got zero is equal to T plus. Now, the force of friction is in the opposite direction to motion. So I'm going to choose up the hill as positive, and that's what we're trying to work out. We're trying to work out what the tension is. So the force of friction is going to be minus. It's minus 
plus now we need to work out the force of gravity parallel which is this dude here it's this line here but this angle here we know is 25 degrees and we know this dude here it's fg so therefore we've got the hypotenuse and we want the opposite so we're going to use sine we're going to go sine of 25 degrees 25 degrees is equal to the opposite side which is fg parallel over the hypotenuse which is fg therefore this is fg sine 25 degrees is equal to fg parallel so we've got naught is equal to t minus 506,26 minus fg parallel but now what did we say it was? We said it was FG sine 25, which is the mass, which is 9,8, times by the, sorry, the force of gravity, which is 9.8, the mass of 300, times by sine of 25. Oh dear, I'm running out of space. So let's pop that in our calculator. Um, I'll tab, yeah. So we're gonna go 300 times 9.8, times sine of 25 close bracket equals 1242,5 because remember the 7 rounds up the 9 so it becomes a 5 so it's 1242.5 1242, 1242,5 so therefore do you agree that t is going to equal to the sum of these two because if we take it across it becomes minus and you divide everything by minus so it becomes a plus so t is equal to that plus 506.26 which equals 1747.76 1748.76 1748,76 and what is the unit it is that is still the tension so this is newtons have we finished no we haven't finished grade 12 please be careful be very very careful because a lot of times my students do this they work out the force forget that they were working out the power and go yay i'm finished and move on to the next question and they knew what to do they knew how to work out the power they just didn't do it because they didn't finish the question they asked you for the average power and power is measured in watts and power is force times velocity so we've worked out the force caused by the engine or the motor it's 1748 comma 76 newtons now what we need to do is we now need to multiply by 0.5 so we go therefore power is equal to 1748 comma 76 times by the velocity of naught comma 5 which is going to be what let's just pop it in the calculator times by 0.5 equals 874.38 874,38 and what is the unit unit is watts okay watts nice question hey that there is a grade 12 exam paper question i think it was a prelim paper question but it's a very nice question okay now it says a windmill on a farm is used to pump stationary water from point a in the well okay yes point a so it has to go up 35 meters right the water flows point b 35 meters about point a at a speed of 2.1 meters per second so do you agree that not only has this water gained potential energy, but it's also gained kinetic energy, okay? It has gained potential energy and kinetic energy. Now it says calculate the maximum power delivered by the windmill if 87 kilograms of water is pumped from the well per minute. 87 kilograms of water is pumped from the well per minute okay remember that power is equal to work over time which equals energy over change in time which equals force times velocity okay so do you agree that this water over here this blue water let me just give it blue this blue water here yeah the ep is equal to zero 
and the EK equals zero. At this point here, the EP has gone up because it has gained 35 meters, plus the EK has gone up because it is now going at 2.1 meters per second. So do you agree that the increase in energy of the water is equal to EP at B plus the EK at B? That's what's happening. It's gained potential energy and it's gained kinetic energy. So if we do that, we've got the mass of the water, which is 87, times by the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8, times the height through which it was moved, which is 35, plus the kinetic energy, which is a half, times by 87, times by the velocity of 2,1. Okay, so let's pop that in our calculator. So we've got, clear, 87 times 9.8 times 35 equals plus bracket 0 0.5 times 87 times 2.1 close bracket equals 29,932 and 35.35. So it's 29,932.35. Okay, 29,932,35 equals, and that is your change in energy, and that's in joules. Okay, but now they say that was pumped per minute. So we know that work or power is equal to delta E over delta T. So if that's per minute, do you agree that's per 60 seconds? So what do we need to do? We need to take this huge number of 29,932,35 and divide it by 60 to get to the joules per second, because that's what we need to get, the joules per second. So if we do that, we do this and we divide this by 60, we get 498.88. So that is equal to 498.88, and that is watts, watts. There we go. Hmm, very nice question. I like the question too. And the trick was the per minute and massive thing. Right, let's carry on. So now we're going to look at the combination questions because a lot of the times work and energy are combined with momentum and we've covered momentum in earlier lessons and now we've covered the work and energy so I want to look at typical exam questions that combine both so first it says I don't know why that's written over there don't worry about it we'll worry about it later first it says a block of mass six kgs slides to the right with a velocity of eight meters per second on a frictionless surface it collides with the stationary block of mass 5 kgs. The blocks move together to the right as a single system along the same surface. Right, so it gets there, and then do you see that there's a raft bit here, and then it gets a raft bit here. Okay, now, so state, in, state the law of conservation of linear momentum in words. So, grade 12, so you need to watch out for these things, not only because you need to know your theory and know how to state the law of conservation of linear momentum in words, but also because of the fact that by asking for you to state the law of conservation of momentum in words, they are hinting to you that this is a momentum question. So the theory states that basically an isolated that conservation, sorry, that the linear momentum of a system, I said system remains constant in both magnitude and direction. Okay, the linear momentum of an isolated system remains constant in both magnitude and direction. Okay, the other versions, but that's a good version. Right, now, so now we know we need to do P before equals P after. It says calculate the velocity of the system of the two blocks immediately after the collision. So we know we need to do P before equals P after. We know this because they've said what is the law of conservation of linear momentum, linear objects? Oh, sorry. The conservation of linear momentum. Okay, what is that law? And now they're asking us for the velocity of the system. Okay, so what do we have? We've got P of the six kilograms plus P of the five kilograms is equal to P of the six and five kilograms because they've stuck together. Okay, they've stuck together. 
So, let's have a look. P is equal to mass times velocity. We've got the mass of the, so we've got mass of the six kilogram, initial velocity of the six kilogram, plus mass of the five kilogram, initial velocity of the five kilogram is equal to mass of the six and five, the final velocity of the six and five. Right. Now it says a block of mass six kilograms slides with a constant velocity of eight plus the M, which is it's in, it collides with a stationary block. So because it's a stationary block, do you agree that there's no velocity? So this is a big fat zero. And it says the blocks move together to the right. They move together to the right. That means they stick together. So the mass is now six plus five, which equals 11. And they said they want the final velocity, VF of 6 plus 5. That's what we're working out, the final velocity. So 6 times 8 is 48, is equal to 11 VF 6 plus 5. Okay, so therefore VF is going to be 48 divided by 11. So we're going to get out our calculators. Again, we're going to go 48 divided by 11 equals... 4.36. So the final velocity is 4,36 meters per second. Okay, so that's just after the hit, just after the hit, right? Now it says the block system continues moving along the same with the same common velocity to point A. Okay, so at this point here, they got 4,36 meters per second. Okay, it then continues over the raft section. Da, 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 okay, at which point, at point B, the velocity now is 1,51 meters per second. Sure, so it lost a lot of energy due to friction over here. So as it finally comes to a stop after moving D distance up the ramp. Okay. Using energy considerations only to calculate the kind of coefficient of sliding friction between the block system and the surface over the two meter stretch. So we just want, at this point in time, we want the coefficient, uh, calculate the coefficient of the sliding friction. We just want that and we need the energy and they tell us that it's 1,51 meters per second. Okay. So we know that work done equals F delta X cos theta, okay? So they're saying use energy considerations only to calculate the coefficient sliding friction, okay? So work done is gonna be the work done against the friction. So do you agree I've started off with the velocity at 4.36 and now I end off with the velocity here, this point here at 1.51. So do you agree I've changed my energy and work done is equal to delta k so this is going to be a half mv f squared minus a half mv i squared is equal to f times by delta x oh sorry i don't know why it's doing that oh sorry 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 let's try again mm. where am i F delta X cos theta. Okay, right. So now it says they want to know what the sliding friction, the coefficient of sliding friction is. Okay, so we've got a half, we've got the mass, we've got the final velocity, we've got the initial velocity. We're working out the force because we've got the delta X. This is the force of friction. Okay, and we know that cos theta is in the opposite direction. So for that reason, we can work out the force of friction because this is going to be the force of friction. So we've got a half times the mass, and remember that these two objects are now together, so it's 11 times by the final velocity squared, which in this case is going to be 1,51 squared minus a half times by 11 times by the initial velocity squared, which is 4.36. How did I get that? Because we started here at 4.36, that's what we worked out here. They tell us that it goes past B at 1.51, which means it's obviously lost a lot of energy going along there, and that's two meters long. 
is equal to F, so that's what we're trying to find out the force of friction, and then delta X is going to be 2, and then the cos theta is going to be negative 1. Okay, so now we can pop things into our calculators again. Okay, and yeah, you will notice that I've just written this beta. Please, guys, you've got to be careful about your squares because if you leave them out, you're going to get them wrong. Okay, so what does it become? It becomes clear. 0, 0,5 times 11 times 1.5 squared minus bracket 0, 0.5 times 11, 11 times 4.36 close bracket no squared close bracket equals oh what did I do sorry <sighs> equals and then we divide by minus 2, divide by minus 2, and then we get this answer, and we press SD button, and it becomes 46.08, 46.09. So the force of friction is 46,09 newtons. That's what we've got. We've got the force of friction is 46.09. 0.09 newtons. Now, but the force of friction is equal to mu k f n, and they want the coefficient of the sliding friction, so they want mu k. So we know that this is 46,09 is mu k, and then they want the normal force. Now, the normal force in this case is just mass times gravity, which is nice. So I'm going to take this and write it over here because I've got space. So I'm going to go 46,09 is equal to mu, which is trying to, what we're trying to find out. The normal force, which is the mass of everything, which is 11, times by the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8. So now I'm going to take that and we're going to put it in our calculator. So we're going to say 46, no, 46.09 divided by bracket 11 times 9.8 close bracket equals 0.43 so mu k is equal to 0.43 and that's a good answer okay and we're going to stop here because of the fact that we are running out of time okay so what i would really like to suggest you guys do is that you come and go through this paper the, the lesson again and make sure you can do all the questions we've done so far and then we will continue with this not tomorrow because there's no extra lessons tomorrow could be in a public holiday but we will carry on with this on wednesday so please join us on Wednesday. Have a great day.